Utopianism has always involved the imagination of a better world, a perfect society set against the imperfect society of the present, whether as an object of speculative philosophical reflection, a practical program for social transformation, or an idle daydream. Utopia has always evinced the hope that reality might be made ideal. In the dictionary, a utopia is defined as an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect, although everyone has their own interpretation of what a utopia is. And I think a true utopia is where everybody gets along and actually become a community. A utopia would be a perfect civilization where everyone got along happily and very few laws would be needed. A utopia is a place in which people attempt to find the ideal situation for everybody that participates in the community. Um, a utopia for me is a place where the word want is no longer in the vocabulary. So people have all of their basic needs and they also have the opportunity to achieve whatever brings them happiness. Where people come together and uh, blend together e even with our differences, kind of a utopia. The idea of a utopia was not created simply by the author of Divergent or a Steven Spielberg movie. This fascinating proposal of a perfect world was created by Sir Thomas More. He wrote about the first utopia about 500 years ago. He coined the word from the Greek word utopos, meaning no place or nowhere. He envisioned a serene community on an island that had defined systems of punishment, social hierarchy, agriculture, marriage, dress, and health. More's legal, practical, spiritual, and moral requirements were strict and straightforward. More even developed a utopian alphabet, a series of symbols to replace the Roman alphabet. More created three key principles of religion that were to be followed. The basic idea of these principles were that religion should be a shared and cherished passion between all the people in order to unite the community. He alluded to the fact that the success of the utopia depended on how well the citizens were united. Although the idea of a utopia may seem fictional and strange, Surprisingly, a small town just three hours south of Zionsville, Indiana, attempted to create one hundreds of years ago. This is the story of New Harmony, Indiana, a civilization created to be a perfect society, but destroyed by the imperfections of man. In 1814, George Rapp left everything he knew in Germany to create a perfect society, a utopia, in Indiana. After a decade of success in what he called harmony, he sold it to Robert Owen, who also strived for a world of perfection. Today, what is now called the New Harmony is a historical treasure that will never be forgotten. Harmony was originally founded by a group of separatists from the German Lutheran Church in the 19th century. These separatists were called Rappites. This name was derived from the last name of their leader, George Rapp. George Rapp founded New Harmony with the intent of creating a perfect society in which everyone was equal and happy. George Rapp was very strict in running Harmony. With a desire to enforce religion in his new civilization, Rapp almost seemed like a godlike figure for many reasons. For example, if someone wanted to join Harmony, they had to confess all of their sins to him. He also had a strict policy that if anyone sinned, they had to confess to him before the day was over. And he required that any disagreements that occurred had to be settled by the end of the day that they took place. Rapp eventually renounced marriage and made citizens of New Harmony live lives of celibacy. These are only a few examples of the harsh rules and policies that Rapp required in New Harmony. When walking through New Harmony, it's easy to see that Rapp's religious beliefs dominated the town. There are two major sites where this is apparent. The first is the Roofless Church, located in the middle of the town. This large stone wall with no roof was built based off of the Raphites' belief that God was so great that he could not be contained under a roof. Another example of George Rapp's religious influence is the hedge labyrinth that the Raphites created for spiritual renewal and peace. The original labyrinth was made with bushes, vines, and flowering plants in 1814. There is now a recreation of the labyrinth in New Harmony which is now a popular, treasured area in the historic community. For the first 10 years, Rapp's Harmony flourished. It was considered a wonder of the West. After
after those ten years, the Rabbites decided they were ready to move on and start a new community elsewhere. The Rabbites sold their land to a Welsh-born philosopher, Robert Owen. Robert Owen was fascinated with the idea of social experiments and wanted to create a communal utopia, mainly focused on developing sciences. After purchasing the land, Robert Owen renamed it New Harmony. His goal for this utopia was to create a society with free education, personal wealth, and no social classes. He even took the idea of a utopia as far as distinguishing the equality of women and men, allowing both genders to lead lives in scientific fields and discoveries. This is a book by Thomas Say. Thomas Say lived here and actually is buried here. He and his wife had come here and he did a rather extensive study of the mussels that were in the Wabash River here at New Harmony. And he would do his drawings. This, this is a book that, with the drawings and explanations mm -hmm. of, what, of what the things that he was finding and studying and so forth. He also liked to study bugs and other little creatures and he also did drawings of them. Robert Owen created a system of time money in New Harmony. The way this system worked was that the currency in New Harmony was worth the amount of time someone spent working. Unfortunately, the inhabitants of New Harmony who weren't scientists were mostly misfits who ate Owen's rations and didn't perform well while working. As a result of this, Robert Owen's utopia quickly fell apart in 1826, just under three years after it was founded in 1825. There were many other factors that led to New Harmony's end as well. For example, the people no longer felt the common goal to be a part of a perfect society, so they abandoned the community, and eventually, even Robert Owen left. That was the official end to the utopian dream for New Harmony. However, the town still continued to grow and develop, New Harmony now looks like just an average everyday town from the outside looking in. Although, when you venture into the town's buildings and museums, you discover the ghosts of both George Rapp and Robert Owen's leadership and discoveries. When you dig into New Harmony's history, you discover that the legacy left behind by both George Rapp and Robert Owen was great. The fact that two back-to-back -back attempts of a utopian society failed leaves the legacy that there can't be a perfect society, because people themselves are imperfect. However, New Harmony is more than just its colorful and mysterious past. It's now a thriving city, plentiful with tourist attractions, antique shops, and a collection of historic architecture. Walking along its streets, you can visit the serene public spaces designed for spiritual renewal. Along with subtle hints of New Harmony's past through small details of the town, such as the Utopia Salon. Years from now, will a new leader attempt the same idea of a perfect world that George Rapp and Robert Owen did centuries ago? If a new leader was to attempt creating a utopia, would it succeed? I don't think a utopia is possible today because people have such different ideas about how everybody should live and want to force those ideas upon other people. I don't think it can. Um, I think there are far too many different people for everyone to get along with everybody else. Uh, I think there are always going to be those people who want to have more power over other people. Will New Harmony's legacy ever be forgotten from generation to generation? Will we find towns like New Harmony all over the globe that are just waiting to be discovered and cherished? Only time will tell.